There's a lot of great characters in animation. Usually when speaking about great characters, people can focus on anything from morally good characters to traditional villains within a show, but one type of character I really enjoy talking about is the character that has no shame in being morally terrible, but somehow manages to win me over because you ask yourself, how could you hate him or her? Daffy Duck is a horrible, horrible person, and that's a good thing. <laughs> I love exploring mean characters because there's so many types. And in this case, we're talking about a Weasley character, which is not easy to write because these characters can end up being extremely annoying. But Daffy manages to do it in a way that not only makes sense, but makes me love him as a character because of the way that he's written. Take this opening scene where he's driving in his world famous parade float, he would ask his friend Bugs Bunny if he's able to merge, to which after not being able to a few times, throws all caution and safety to the wind and merges anyway. That's it. I'm going for it. Great. Now we have to go to the car wash. Now to some, it may be weird to call Bugs, Bugs Bunny, and not just Bugs. But I really do want to emphasize that Daffy Duck's friend is supposed to be Bugs Bunny. Do you think he thought of his friend when merging, crashing, and falling into the grass? No, he thought about his parade float. He didn't say a single thing about Bugs, his friend. And just you wait, this entire episode is going to shed light on how Daffy treats his friends which surrounds this float. To those who don't know, this float is his baby. And I do mean he gave birth to it, literally through his own hard work as a single father. This episode strikes a great balance in between being meaningful, but also being really comedic and lighthearted. And you can see it within this car wash scene. And I know I brought this up in a few other Looney Tunes show reviews, but having these rigid and realistic models for people, cars, in fact, most objects, you've never seen such a comedic, cartoonish reaction to putting a paper mache float within a car wash. Everything from him rushing into trying to pull it off the locking mechanism, or getting completely stuck in a rubber bristle brush part, I don't even know what that's called. What is even that called? I, I tried googling it, and nothing pops up, but how would you even google, what would you even google for that part? Anyway, while generally considered to be selfish and self-centered in the way that he's depicted, considering the parade float to be a part of him, and his identity, not only does it make sense for him to now risk his own life to rescue it, but specifically in this way, in this style, where it makes him look like the biggest idiot to everyone in the vicinity. Now you may think that Daffy would be smart enough to protect his parade float, but no, he does not think about the fact that car washes have water. In the same way that Daffy did not think about the safety of bugs, Daffy thinks about himself and his items, and that's really it. Now you may say, that's not too bad. Well, I beg to differ. We're still very, very early in this episode in how Daffy falls from grace. My eye! My eye! Oh my eye! Daffy, yeah. don't move! I'm getting the first yeah. aid kit! Yeah. <laughs> Let me see your eye! It's all that's left! My beautiful parade float is gone! We, we never even got to be in a parade. It's very important here that Bugs didn't get mad or belittle Daffy, as again, the float is a part of his identity. It was a great use of misdirection that didn't take away from the severity of the situation, at least with Daffy. Rather, Bugs is very concerned for someone he does consider a friend and gives him the space he needs to mourn. Little does he know, this space would end up taking what I assume to be an entire calendar year. You don't really get to see it packaged as nicely as it is here, but when you look at the weather changes, the sky in particular, I always found it so unique the way that they approached it, as it really does make everything look so clean. However, I would it feel too bad for Daffy? I know crying for a year and mourning the loss of a parade float is something that everyone watching this video could relate to, but wait until you figure out exactly why he stretched it out for this long. Daffy? <gasps> Bugs! I knew it! I knew you'd come through for me! I knew if I stayed in here long enough and sobbed loud enough, You'd make me another parade float. Let it be clear, this is very selfish and whiny behavior. However, the reason I'm not annoyed by it is because it still follows a general comedic flow. 
The misdirection was there, right after the eye gag, where it was perfectly reasonable to suspect that he would be mourning because he didn't know what to do and needed some time. To think this entire time, he was subtly hinting to Bugs to build another parade float for him that, by the way, would have to be up to Daffy's standards, standards he wouldn't even be able to satisfy because it's Daffy, is exactly why Daffy is kind of messed up, but in an entertaining way. His bravado and confidence in speaking about how he wanted to quit crying on some days but persevered as if he in any way was helping the situation is insane. Of course Bugs didn't build a float, but mistakenly advises Daffy to move on to something that fits him better. Remember, this is Daffy, and Daffy thinks of himself a certain way. However, I want to be fair to the guy. Normal cars are for normal people. I'm not normal. I'll give you that. You're my best friend. You know me better than anyone. You see what a horrible person I am. That's why I have to drive a parade float. I'm not sure if this aids in my justification that Daffy is a horrible person, but he admits it here. Now, even though he's saying this after merely crying for a year, which is some pretty psychotic stuff that I absolutely do not want to dismiss as being nothing big, it just pales in comparison as to what he's about to do. When Bugs recommends him to move on, he moves on to a yacht. And just hearing how he speaks about the yacht, using a low tone and words that express how the yacht represents him in such a lavish way, it makes me think that he's watching too many of those diamond ring advertisements, which are a scam by the way. And while Daffy has always thought rich, despite having no money, no work ethic, no talent, no credit, and no rich friends, he somehow managed throughout the series to get into places where he didn't belong. Take the episode Members Only, an episode I did cover a while back, where he was able to sneak in by using a membership ID that he did not have consent to use. So while on the surface, he doesn't appear to have money, Daffy finds a way. And oh boy, did he find an interesting way here. I'm not giving you $375,000 for a yacht, but you're my best friend. That's what best friends do. No, they don't. Daffy so far has had a very narrow, one-way transactional relationship with Bugs. Whether it was tiny things such as needing him to check if he can merge, to moderate things such as begging for a parade float to be built, to now well beyond the realm of outrageous things, such as asking for such a large amount of money. Daffy is partially self-aware that he is this horrible person, but more importantly, he has no shame or self-reflection skills at least to even pick up on this. The person who's moral center is so far out of whack that they would expect to be given such a large amount of money just because, when they would never do the same, is what defines such a weaselly character. To Daffy, the end goal is just another vanity project, regardless of the people he has to step to get there. In his mind, the end justify the means, and anything he had to do, given his end goal here, happiness, just in the form of hedonism, was necessary, as he couldn't imagine a world where you would wouldn't want to help him achieve something so great for him, as he's self-aware that he could not help himself. It's exactly why he would later go on to poorly try to trick Bugs into thinking that if he rephrased the question as him needing money for charity, that Bugs would fall for it. He doesn't assume highly of Bugs' intelligence, but a better way to view it is that Daffy doesn't have the mental capabilities to think beyond himself when it comes to vanity projects. It's that classic Looney Tunes-based shell that makes him not just a great horrible character, but a great horrible character that explores a lot of deeper subjects without making it seem boring or too serious. However, for your patience, now that we got all of the background information out of the way, let's just rip the bandaid off. You want to know why Daffy is a horrible, horrible person? Daffy, no one's going to give you $375,000. Uh, of course I'll give you the $375,000. I knew I could count on you, Porky. A while ago, I made a rise and fall on Coconut Fred. It was a show that revolved around this coconut named Fred, where through watching the series, I noticed that Fred was actually not just a bad protagonist, but a character that causes a lot of pain to the people around him that he deems close friends. Even in the worst Coconut Fred episodes that feature his hedonistic behavior, it does not come close to how this was built. Daffy doesn't just trick Porky into giving him $375,000. Daffy doesn't just lie to Porky by 
saying that he has a life-threatening condition that just so happens to need this money for an operation that's done today, Daffy doesn't just lie to Porky again by saying that he didn't ask Bugs specifically because, and this is his third lie, that Porky is Daffy's best friend. Daffy does all of this knowing that it's everything that Porky has and has no qualms or regret or second thoughts over what Porky is going to do without any money to support himself. That right there is the embodiment of horrible, but in a good way. Horrible in the sense that this episode has built him up to really like that float, but then show us scenes where he's 100% willing and also wanting to step over people to take their money, even from people who are easily tricked or believe that he's speaking in good faith. His conscious is non-existent at this point, and they play this up very casually, as if this is on the same level as like small talk or something like that. No, he's bankrupting Porky for a vanity project. This is only $350,000. But it's all I have. Porky, you are making this very hard for me. Do you think I like having to come to my best friend for money? Can you imagine what this is like for me? Sorry, he's bankrupting and shaming Porky for not having more that he can take from him for his vanity project. He not only takes his family heirloom and debit card, but even makes him look like a really bad friend for not having more to give. Morally, Daffy is corrupt, and it's not usually brought to this height in Looney Tunes show episodes. The serious nature of this contrasted against the comedic things at the car wash, or the comedic dynamic with the more mature, skeptical, and socially experienced bugs, it really shows you that this is going to be a big deal. And not only that, but given that Daffy was rather composed when driving, extremely concerned at the car wash set at home and somewhat aggressive at Porky's home, it only makes poetic sense that his happiest moment within the episode is him celebrating on a yacht that he had to bankrupt a friend for. This is why I say that supposedly they're friends. In reality, Daffy tries their patience all the time, but this is a new low, even for him, and I think that's fantastic. It really brings you to the height of his hateable nature. And speaking of height, we see Porky at his lowest, eating garbage in a freezing home with piling bills, to which Bugs gets concerned and visits his friend. I tried calling you, but your phone's been disconnected. Why is it so dark in here and cold? I couldn't pay my bills. Why not? I gave all my money to Daffy. Why would you give all your money to Daffy? If, if for his kidney transplant. If, do you know how he's doing? Let's go find out. And to be clear, while Daffy's actions here were hedonistic, selfish, manipulative, some would say evil, at no point does the episode seem to endorse his actions or feel like it is the right way to go. They show you multiple people either confused, dismissive, or in Porky's case, flat out naive to the way that Daffy thinks or acts. No one would have given him that money for the yacht or rebuilt the float because no one cares, and I would wager that Daffy knows that. However, what makes this episode great, even despite the fact that no one treats him like a god, or that this episode dodges the things just so happen to work out for the annoying character despite the odds of everyone trying to prevent it, is that this episode gives you catharsis. How's the kidney? Kidney? Ha <laughs> ha I just told Porky that so he'd give me the money for the yard. <laughs> Daffy isn't treated like a misunderstood person. Daffy isn't treated like a lovable rascal. Daffy is treated like he made a really terrible decision and ruined someone's life over it. Bonus points for Bugs being a great friend and letting the fight happen because Daffy deserves it. Porky was willing to sacrifice a comfortable life if it meant saving the life of someone who referred to him as a best friend. Daffy wasn't going to use the yacht in some competition to win the money back and recoup what Porky gave to him. Daffy wasn't going to work with Porky to get his situation back to where it was. In fact, anything about Porky at all, I am 100% sure I am willing to wager left the mind of Daffy once he left Porky's house with Porky's money. That is because Daffy does not have the mental capabilities to think about anyone else when it comes to his own vanity projects. He's stubborn and pathetic in the way that he just slimes through everything. And honestly, it takes extreme emotions like the love he has for Tina, or the begrudging respect that he has for Gossamer, or the pain of getting his butt kicked by Porky for him to finally give in and see how other people feel about a situation. You give Daffy an inch, and he will take a mile, and then another mile after that. And that's exactly what happened here. How could you leave him lie to me? I'm sorry. 
I thought if I told you what the money was for, you wouldn't give it to me. I wouldn't have. You just proved my point. How am I the bad guy here? Well, to not repeat what I've been saying, let's tackle this in another way. We'd later go on to see that he would much rather continue to get beaten up and die on the hill of not giving Porky his money back than actually keep him as a friend, making the morally right move and make things right purely on the fact that he can find new friends given that he has a yacht. Saying that he's bankrupted a friend and was willing to let him go is an understatement. We'd see that the ship was never tied to the dock, so it gets swept out to sea. When asked about life jackets, sails, a radio, he'd give the exact same reason that he didn't get one, because he wanted to get a jacuzzi and a second jacuzzi, and the budget didn't allow, despite Porky giving him everything that he had. So it is more accurate to say that even though he admits the lie about driving Porky to become broke, he feels that it's Porky's fault and that Porky is a bad guy for not having more money to satisfy Daffy's expensive interests amongst having Daffy's interests in mind to give him that money at any time for any reason on a whim so that Daffy doesn't have to lie about it. That's why he got beat up and that's why Bugs doesn't take him seriously. However, if you expect me to feel bad for Porky beyond the first incident, you'd be mistaken. Take this scene here, where Daffy was tied up because he tried to take the makeshift sail down that would have rescued them as Bugs took everyone back to shore. I see now that it's not money or things that matter. It's friends, best friends, and you, Porky Pig, you are my best friend. Do you really mean it? Have you ever known me to lie? Uh, y yes, you lied about it and needing a kidney transplant. That's in the past. Now please, untie me so I can give my best friend a great big hug. Ah! Porky! Porky wants to believe that Daffy is a good person. Daffy is not a good person, and for a good reason. Daffy needed to be tied up for this exact reason. So while I do sympathize with Porky when it comes to being broke, the untying is completely on him given that it happened pretty much within the same amount of time where he was aware that Daffy is a liar. In fact, focusing on that aspect a little bit more, isn't it crazy that Daffy could find the right words to make it seem like he's a completely changed person? Yet it's always with Porky. Bugs sees right through it, and in other cases, Tina for the most part can see right through it as well. It's why during Double Date, another episode I reviewed, Tina was self-aware from the start that Daffy embellishes his strengths far beyond what they actually are, and knows that Daffy lies, but loves the project of building him into becoming a decent human being. He's really good at being really bad, and speaking of really bad, he takes the sheets that were the makeshift sail and jumps into the water with them, clearly not being able to swim with it wrapping around him in the process. Luckily, he was not only saved, but humbled. <gasps> it was a dream. It was all a dream. That explains why I was such a horrible person and did all those horrible things. Eh, not a dream. You are a horrible person, and you did do those horrible things. And that's what makes this such a good episode. Accountability. Accountability didn't make this episode boring. Accountability didn't make this episode moral-based. Accountability didn't even make this episode more complex. It's a basic thing that you need when you have a Weasley character. If you want your morally horrible character to be likable in some aspect, this character has to be entertaining and not taken seriously, or be relatable, or just have something that they at least respect somewhat to keep them accountable. Daffy within a Looney Tunes show is a lot of those aspects. Everything he did here was entertaining despite how morally awful it was. And I loved the feeling of seeing Porky beat the crap out of Daffy because he deserved it. Doing one of the most gummy things you can do to someone that you label a friend. It shows you the adventures they go on because Daffy is willing to take it there. In an ironic twist, we see that through selling the yacht, the doctor says that he actually needs a kidney transplant. Said transplant that he lied about with Porky earlier, to which Bugs sources the money for. Now you may bring up that I said what makes this episode work is that no one is giving Daffy an out, and I still believe that here. Daffy was shown what friends would do in a dire situation, which is to actually help, not for a yacht, but for a good reason. So does Daffy learn something in the end? Not really, but he doesn't get treated like he's misunderstood or just a lovable rascal. He's treated as if he's tolerable, but you have to watch him. And that's the dynamic that works for him. Well, at least on 
a Looney Tunes show. So yes, Daffy is still a horrible, horrible person, and that's a good thing. Let me know what you guys think. And until then, take care. Alpha out.